It has been two weeks since the start of the recent Israel-Palestine war, and the situation has turned Gaza into hell. Since October 9th, Israel has enforced a complete blockade on Gaza, leading to the cessation of vital supplies like food, medicines, water, and even electricity. The ongoing incessant bombardment has caused unimaginable destruction, reducing entire neighborhoods to rubble. The harrowing scenes emerging from Gaza are heart-wrenching. Numerous Gaza buildings have been targeted and destroyed by Israeli forces. The estimated civilian killings have surpassed 2,800, with thousands still trapped amid the debris. Survivors are seeking refuge in hospitals and schools, but by October 16, even United Nations shelters were running out of water. The United Nations Relief and Works Agency UNRWA has declared the situation in Gaza an unprecedented human catastrophe. Mehmoud Maida, a surgeon in Gaza, reported that hospitals are overwhelmed, lacking water, electricity and stable network connections. Another doctor at Nazia Hospital warned that they are running out of fuel to operate vital medical equipment such as ventilators, a situation mirrored in other hospitals as well. On October 17, health officials announced the imminent shutdown of the only oncology hospital in Gaza, leaving all cancer patients without critical care. If we look at the map of Gaza, it is a small territory covering just 365 square kilometres, houses 2.3 million people, making it one of the most densely populated areas in the world. Even before the conflict, the living conditions were dire. The majority of the population, nearly half, consisted of children. Tragically, an estimated 60% of the casualties in this conflict are women and children. Critics have likened Gaza to an open-air prison due to its restricted access to the world and dire living conditions. The people in Gaza is constantly under Israeli surveillance and cannot even travel beyond Gaza without Israel's permission. The conflict was ignited when Hamas launched an attack on Israel on October 7, triggering a continuous Israeli bombardment on Gaza and the complete blockade, which has taken a toll on both Hamas members as well as common innocent Palestinian civilians. This has turned Gaza into a living hell. Many argue that Israel's collective punishment to innocent people in Gaza resembles terrorism. The Norwegian foreign minister said that a total blockade on Gaza is unacceptable and Israel must at least let humanitarian aid, such as medicine and food, enter Gaza. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres have also called for the allowance of humanitarian aid in Gaza and the release of Israeli hostages by Hamas unconditionally. Consider yourself in Gaza where you don't have electricity, water, internet or food. Suddenly you see pamphlets falling from the sky where there is warning that if you want to survive, you need to vacate your house in north of the Gaza Strip and move to south of the Gaza Strip as soon as possible because there will be imminent bombardment all around the area. Northern Gaza, home to approximately 1.1 million people, was instructed to evacuate by the Israeli Defense Forces, which means even United Nations shelters is no longer safe from bombardment. Everything including schools, hospitals and clinics can be a target. The UNRWA pointed out that it is impossible for pregnant women, children and the elderly people to evacuate the place. World Health Organization also strongly condemned Israel's orders of evacuating northern Gaza. In northern Gaza, there are 22 hospitals that have more than 2,000 patients. How is it possible to evacuate all these hospitals? The Israeli military claimed that around 600,000 Gazans evacuated from the northern area to the south, but 500,000 people did not evacuate. Reports suggest that even fleeing to southern Gaza is not making these people safe from bombing because there are instances of airstrikes in central and southern Gaza also. A southern Gaza city, Khan Yunus, suffered multiple airstrikes in the last couple of days. BBC confirmed that a building near the Rafa crossing in southern Gaza was also damaged by Israeli airstrike. Israel hit the area near the Rafa crossing point at least three times last week. This area is very important because it is the border crossing between Gaza and Egypt. As there is no safe place in Gaza, some people is thinking of leaving Gaza. On one side, there is the Mediterranean Sea where they cannot go. On two sides, there is Israel where they obviously cannot go. As a result, the only place that they can flee to is Egypt in the south. And the only border crossing between Gaza and Egypt is the Rafa crossing. To escape the bombardment, 
thousands of people is gathering at the Rafa border to go to Egypt. But Egypt is not opening this border. Egypt and other Arab countries' stance is that Palestinian people cannot be thrown out of their own country. Additionally, the risk of a wider regional conflict looms as clashes erupted between Israel and Lebanon where the Hezbollah militant group, supported by Iran, operates. In 2006, Hezbollah and Israel were engaged in war for a month. There has been a brief rocket firing between Hezbollah and Israel in the last few days. Hezbollah poses a more significant threat than Hamas due to its substantial stock of rockets and missiles that can attack anywhere in Israel. Iran has also warned Israel against a ground invasion in Gaza, further escalating tensions. A big mystery is that Hamas collected more than 5,000 rockets in Gaza while Israel being completely unaware of it. Reports suggest that Egypt had already warned Israel about an imminent attack. Another report states that one day before the attack American officials informed Israel about Hamas' unusual activity and warned that an attack could happen any time. A diplomat in Washington, D.C. from Middle East has confirmed CNN of his government's repeated warning to the White House and the Az intelligence officials about a buildup of weapons by Hamas. He claimed that Hamas had so many weapons in Gaza that it was beyond anybody's imagination. These reports clearly suggest that government of Israel already knew about this attack and did nothing. But why? Here we need to take a close look at Israel's internal politics. It has been quite unstable for the past few years. There has been accusations of fraud, breach of trust and taking bribery in three different scandals against the current Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu denies these accusations but a corruption trial is going on against him which include cases 1000, 2000 and 4000. He is trying to interfere with the judiciary. He is trying to change the selection process of judges for his trial. Citizens of Israel are against it and there were nationwide protests in Israel a while back. Netanyahu has used emergency powers from the start of this war which is really helping him to keep his position secure. Now, important takeaways is that if this war had not happened and the corruption trial against him went on as scheduled, he would have had to resign from his prime ministerial position. There is another allegation against Netanyahu is that in the past he tried to encourage the Hamas group. On one side, there was the great Israeli Prime Minister Yithak Rabin, who tried relentlessly to bring peace between Israel and Palestine. I have talked about it in my video on history of Israel-Palestine conflict. You will find it on my channel if you are interested. After the assassination of Yithak Rabin, the peace process was almost over. On the other side, there is Netanyahu who leads a right-wing government. His government policies divided the power between Gaza Strip and West Bank. He ignored the legitimate Palestinian authority and tried to negotiate with Hamas indirectly through Egypt. An article was published in the Telegraph named How Benjamin Netanyahu Empowered Hamas and Broke Israel. Another article was published in the Times of Israel named For Years Netanyahu Propped Up Hamas. Now it's blown up in our faces. This article describes that, according to several reports, Netanyahu had said to his officials that they should facilitate fund transfer to Gaza so that there can be a separation between the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank and Hamas in Gaza. He believes this gap will ensure that a Palestinian state will never be formed. A politician from Netanyahu's political party made a statement in 2015 about Israel's policy is to treat the Palestinian Authority as a burden and treat Hamas as an asset. The Netanyahu government allowed transfer of millions of dollars from Qatar to Gaza to benefit Hamas in 2018. These information may seem shocking to you but the majority of the Israeli people are aware of all of these. Thanks to the Israeli media which is still free and does not sit in their government's lap. These developments have shaken public trust in the Israeli government. Since the war started, the approval rating of Netanyahu has decreased rapidly. According to a recent poll, Netanyahu has only 29% of the Israeli support now. That is an all-time low. Israel is now witnessing severe public protests against Netanyahu's government, with placards in their hands. That's why we should never have blind faith in any government, party or group. We should always take side with humanity and think about the distress of common people, whether they are the common people of Israel or the common people of Gaza. It is essential to prioritize the well-being of the people affected by the conflict and seek a peaceful resolution to the long-standing issues in the region. Thank you.